Ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering what item level you need to be at to run Mythic Zero once that's available and how to get there, then this video is going to shed some light and provide some tips. The most common question that I get is what item level do I need to be at in order to get into Mythic Zero? Let's look into some numbers. The gear that you're going to get in there is going to be 593 item level. Obviously that's way too high and everything in there is going to be tuned for a much lower number. The gear that we get right now from Heroics is 571 item level. So that means that if you're around that number, you should be more than fine. Yes, I know there are people out there who are currently at 585 or 590. And yes, the higher item level is the easier time you're going to have in the Mythic Zero dungeons. However, you don't need to sweat that much to get that number to such high values as all the gear that you're getting right now you're going to easily replace as soon as Mythic Zero is out. So at the end of the day, get as high as you can, but aim for just 570, that's gonna be more than enough, and even anything in the 560 range is gonna be fine. You're just going to have a little bit rougher time in the first few dungeons until you manage to get a couple of good pieces. And now, once the numbers are out of the way, the next question is, how do we get there? Now obviously you can go run heroics to get some valor stones and a chance for a gear to drop for you while you're in there. However, there's alternative ways for you to farm some resources and still have a chance for you to get some gear to drop. First, pick up the weekly quest in the center of Dornogal. It will give you four different options to pick from in order to complete it. The best pick is probably world quests as we're going to be doing some of these for the next steps, but you can also pick assembly of the machine, which is one of the options as well. The next step is just to open your map and look at all the world quests that are available in all the zones. If they give you a piece of gear and that's an upgrade, just go and do them. Also, look for world quests that give you coffer keys. Those are used in delves, so you want to get them, but don't use them until season one starts, as the bountiful delves could actually give you a piece of gear and the level of that gear is connected to the level of the delve. Right now we can only do delves up to level 3 but once season 1 starts you can go all the way up to 8 which gives you the maximum level rewards so you want to save your precious keys for that point. Once you're out in the world look for rares in between the quests as they can also drop gear and the bigger rares can drop gear that item level is actually higher than the heroic dungeons. That gear could also be warbound so you can actually send it to oats if you cannot wear it yourself. Even if you don't get lucky and you don't get gear you should at least get some reputation and renown which can come into play later. The next step do the weekly events in each of the zones as they can drop gear as well. You can start with the theater next to Dornogal, but once you get to the Ringing Deeps, go to Gnabos first and take the quests from there before you start the Awakening the Machine scenario. This quest once completed gives you a chest that can drop a piece of gear and if you complete the event you won't be able to complete the quest if you get it after that. You can find Gnabble just south of the guy that actually starts the event. Now, the event itself, once completed, can give you up to 4 chests, but I haven't seen a piece of gear drop from them. However, the quest that you get from Gnabbles can give you a chest that could drop a piece of gear. Which is why it's important to pick it up in advance. Once you're done with the ringing deeps, you can head over to Hollowfall. In order to unlock the weekly event here, you have to complete 3 world quests in the zone first. Which is quite welcome if you pick the world quest options for the weekly quest in Dornogal. Once you're done with the world quests, head to the northmost part of the map where you have to kill 3 elite enemies. Now you have to summon them and you have to farm bait before that or you can just wait around the holes where they summon, wait for somebody else to summon them and then just tag them to get the credit. As you can see, the chests from these events actually drop big upgrades. This one was 574 item level for me, and it also drops those coffer keys for the delves that you need to save. Once you get to the last zone, Ashka Head, first go to the middle of the map and pick up the weekly quest from there, as that gives you yet another chest and another chance for gear. The quest is one of those fill the bar agendas, and you can do that easily by just doing world quests in the area. 
five would be more than enough, but once you do three, you're actually going to open a special event quest, which is also close to the middle. The best part, this quest actually gives you yet another chest and it counts toward that fill the bar weekly area quest in the zone. The quest itself is quite easy, just bump some Nerubians, get the chest and get out of there. Once you're done with everything, don't forget to turn in the weekly quest in Dornigal, as the chest from there also gives you a chance at piece of gear. Depending on how lucky you are doing this world event tour, some of my tunes got from 520-ish up to the 550s in item level, although some of them were not that lucky. And now that you're done questing, what's next? Keep in mind that you can always go and buy gear on the auction house, but first you should check all the renowned quartermasters. They sell different pieces of gear at 584 item level, which is quite high, and the price is resonant crystals, which you should have plenty of and you can trade those off between the characters in your account. If the renowned vendors happen to sell an item on a slot where you have the lowest item level in your gear, definitely consider investing some of the resonant crystals to buy that. You can also consider crafting some gear, although I would recommend save your spark for now, especially if you want to craft embellishment piece of gear as they're still tuning everything and things might change by the time season 1 actually starts. However, crafting items that do not require spark is totally fine and you can go down this road if you don't have any other options. And last but not least, don't forget to upgrade your gear at the end using Valor Stones and the Wither Quests. The Valor Stones you can keep farming, while the Weather Crests are only useful right now. The higher gear that we're going to get later on is going to require higher item level crests to upgrade, so if you don't spend your Weather Crests right now, you won't be able to use them later as you're not going to be able to upgrade the gear that you're getting with them. So make sure to invest them in those higher item level pieces that you get from the vendors or drop for you from the chests, and keep in mind that it's actually a little bit more efficient to use the crest to actually craft gear instead of upgrade it directly, but it's probably also much more expensive to do that. If you follow those steps, after you're done with the upgrade, you should be pretty close to the 570 mark, if not higher, and also keep in mind that you can do this all over again next week, which should get you in a pretty good shape for the week where Mythic Zeros open. Hopefully that was helpful and if you have any other tips, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Now get out of here.